Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for your Tuesday, November 5th, 2019, right? That is the right date, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, cool. Yes, um, Tuesday, November 5th. But keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid, okay? So just because this is, a, this is dated for the 5th of November, it doesn't mean it has to resonate on that day, yes? Um, whenever this, you, you, you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates for you, then that's the message for you at that time, yeah? I hope you guys are having a wonderful week so far. Um, you know, we're day two, you know, in this, in this, in this week. Yesterday was a really interesting day. Um, as, as you guys, many of you know from watching yesterday's reading, I personally dealt with a good deal of social anxiety, but I was able to pull myself out of that, um, you know, throughout the day. I, I basically resolved to just um, focus on, you know, cleaning. I had a bunch of laundry to do, um, organizing some stuff, maybe, you know, looking to get rid of some of the clutter that's just been taking up space in my room. Um, and by the end of the day, I was much better. So hopefully you guys um, were able to turn your day around also if you weren't feeling so great. Yeah. All right. So let's get into the pre-shuffle energies here. Now, in collecting, uh, connecting with the collective here, the, 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 the theme, the common theme has been orange. That's the color that I see. And for those of you that are like fairly new to my channel, um, I, when I channel for people, I also, I, I tend to see colors and the colors that I see help to lead me in a direction as to what the general theme of the reading or the situation someone is in means, or it often, um, uh, the colors I see cor or, or, or corroborate with the, uh, the, the seven major chakras in our body. So that would be from the root, your root chakra to your crown chakra. Um, and often with the color that I see, it leads me to either a certain color, a certain chakra or a certain theme surrounding that chakra, which, um, or associated with that chakra, which helps me to understand, you know, uh, get a, it helps lead me down the path of deciphering what the message is, right? And so for the collective lately, I've been seeing orange. Orange is the color of your sacral chakra, uh, which is the location of your emotional, your emotions, your emotional body, um, and, and all that stuff. And the, our emotions have been very high lately, but, but high in mainly in awareness. Um, we, there's been a lot of a, a focus placed on our emotions lately for the collective, um, cleaning them out, dealing with them, facing them, purging. Also focus on maintaining your happiness, maintaining your high vibration, because that's really what you're going to need when you are manifesting, right? You need to maintain um, a certain high elevation in your res in your vibration because if you're trying to manifest things but then constantly thinking negative thoughts, you know you you're not going to be able to manifest the the best of what it is you're really looking to manifest, right? Okay, so as I was connecting, I saw the orange, which okay, that's great, but then I saw brown, and brown to me was very indicative of fall colors. Yes, here in the northern hemisphere, we are in fall. Southern hemisphere, I believe you are, you guys are in like, like spring, summer ish times. Um, but the brown color was more focused or more resonating with or was a message of grounding, needing to ground your emotions or ground through whatever emotional reality you might be moving through right now, okay? So then our pre-shuffle consists of exactly that. We have the Five of Cups, which is the card that has come out. Thankfully, though, it is the side of the card where we're now either being guided to or are t t turning our focus on rising from the ashes, okay? So whatever emotional stuff you've been dealing with now, either now is the time for you to start focusing on the life after whatever death you dealt with or whatever loss you've dealt with here, 
this is represented by that you see that that rose that's growing behind this person and also the focus is not on even though the person is still looking at the other three cups that have spilled this side of the card the focus is mainly on the the, the rebirth that's symbolized here by this flower or the rose and the two cups that are still standing behind this person because ultimately you are embarking on a brand new journey you're starting a new path you're learning you're learning how to be a better manifester okay you're learning the ins and outs of yourself how you how you work how you operate who you truly are as a spiritual divine being having this physical experience in these physical meat suits <laughs> I love calling it that. Anyway, um, you know, that's that's basically, in my opinion, as a reader, that's what the Page of Pentacles represents. It represents a level up. It's remember, it couldn't, can't, I'm hearing starting over specifically, and it's funny because I just saw 555 five, five on the counter there. For some of you, you are in fact starting over, but you're not starting from scratch. You're starting from a place, well, you might be kind of starting from scratch, but you're starting from a place of higher wisdom, divine wisdom, uh, a deeper understanding. And so yes, basically Spirit just said you're getting a level up, okay? The Page of Pentacles also represents, entre uh, yes, it can represent entrepreneurship, um, but it also rep uh, represents apprenticeship, learning new skills, learning new crafts, um, committing to something, being truthful, being honest, being playful, being inquisitive. Um, I'm hearing enjoying your time spent together. That's interesting. Um, if you are learning, oh, okay, well, some of you, okay. This is absolutely uh, in terms of that phrase, i.e. Uh, enjoying your time spent together. Some of you are really starting to connect with soul family um, in some new and much more positive and uplifting ways. And you're learning together also, okay, which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. On the other side of the, of the deck, we have the two of pentacles all right so this is about maintaining balance I'm, I'm i'm picking up specifically this is especially in terms of like the page of pentacles that's here this is learning to maintain your balance emotionally because you do have these waters behind you okay but i'm just i'm getting specifically it's learning how to keep an a, a strong sense of equilibrium that does not mean that you are hiding from your emotions that you are stuffing them down that you are ignoring them no absolutely not it's the exact opposite you are in fact acknowledging them but you're doing what you need to do in order to maintain your sense of equilibrium even if you might be dealing with something that's not so emotionally pretty right that's all part of this manifestation learning process that's all that, that that is in fact something that you're going to need to understand and maintain your balance in if you want to continue manifesting the best possible outcome not just for yourself but also for others because we are co-creating here you know what i mean not to say that you, you're you you have this massive responsibility to maintain your emotional equilibrium for the sake of others no it's for first and foremost it's for yourself the ten of cups just caught my attention um but yeah and here's the page of cups now um anyway so but but no first and foremost you need to maintain your equilibrium for yourself okay because quite frankly we are really the only players in our lives I mean, I'm, I'm basically just an illusion. I am something that you manifested in your life because you were looking for guidance. Here I am. I manifested you guys because I wanted to help people. Here you are. Makes sense? So in order to really maintain um, your highest poss possible outcome, you, you need to maintain, learn to maintain your equilibrium through the highs and the lows. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. And that's where that brown color, see, coming back full circle. That's where that brown color came through in the, in the beginning because we're learning to stay grounded throughout the trials and the tribulations. Yes? Excellent. So, let's give this one more shuffle and then we'll see what else we have for the rest of the day. Yeah? All righty, kids. Here we go. Ah, 
hi spirit please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our tuesday november 5th 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, I'm gonna give this three shuffles. And then we will see what we've got here. One, oops. Two. For the collective, best messages, please, Spirit. What would you like to discuss with us today? And three. All right, here we go. Let's see what we've got for today, kids. Tuesday, November 5th. What would you like to discuss with us today, please, spirit? Dear spirit, what is going on with the collective? What is going on with the collective today? Oh, 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 oh no. There you go. Okay, there's one. Some more. All right, stand by. My eyes are closed, so I don't know what's fallen out, but we'll see in just a moment. Just bear with us here. We're getting the message. More. Okay. One more, you say. Yes, please. Okie dokie. One more, and we'll see what else comes out. And I think we're going to stop here. Yeah. Oop, let that fall out too. Okay. Okay. Is that it? Stop there. Excellent. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, there's that five of cups again. <laughs> but you do have the fool on one side with the emperor on the other. This is our, these are our overall energies. Okay. Both backs are turned. And to me, they're looking off in the distance, preparing for whatever it is you're looking to embark on. All right. Um, interesting. We have the five of cups again, also with the six of pentacles, the two of cups and the two of swords. And then on the other side, we have the four of swords and justice. <clears throat> Give me just a second here. I w okay. Let's start here. Five of Cups, especially since the Five of Cups came out in our pre-shuffle. Um, let's start with this. So, uh, yes, I'm definitely hearing emotional turmoil here, okay? Um, there is... All right, what I, I heard reconciliation but what I wanted to say was there is a realization here of how I mean, how things in, in relationships are really not truly balanced. And this could be a relationship that you're already currently in. Um, but there's indecisiveness here. There's you don't know how to deal with it. You don't know what to do about it. You don't know how to make ends meet is what I want to say. Um, you don't know how to strive forward. Interesting. Um, this also could be a past relationship. I'm kind of picking up an energy of like masculine energies here, kind of looking at um, kind of, especially with the fact that the two of cups here is it's a daytime scene, right? So this tends to mean that something is someone is com conscious of something, right? fully aware, fully conscious of something, all right? It's not necessarily something that they may be in denial about, even though we do have this two of swords here. So there might be, so, so, okay. So you, there might be an individual that is kind of trying, is in denial about something, but the nature of the relationship here or the nature of, if this is a past situation for you in which something was missed out on, because we do have this five of cups, right? Um, you might be in denial about how to handle it, how to come forward. You might kind of, 
I really don't I really don't feel like this is denial here guys what I feel like here is someone doesn't know how to move forward someone doesn't know how to approach a situation someone doesn't know how to reconcile someone may be trying to figure out how to reconcile okay and then on the other side here you have the four of swords with justice yeah what I'm getting with this I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys what I'm getting with this is wreckage um, because you see how in the in the background of this four of swords there's there are fires there's a massive fire that's burning and I can't I'm looking at it here I can't really tell if there is a town back there or if it's just the forest that's burning it really doesn't matter what I'm getting here is basically someone is left to just watch something burn to the ground. And there is really nothing they can do about it. Because quite frankly, how this feels is justice is being served here. This almost feels like a tower moment. The, what the Four of Swords and justice is, is speaking to. It feels like because you know how in the tower, for many of you, many of you do know this because you're quite familiar with the tarot. If you're not familiar to, with, to, with the tarot, that's okay, don't worry. But um, in the tower, it's normally, the tower is major arcana. The tower represents a sudden change, a sudden upheaval, something that is very, very unexpected, something or tends to be very unexpected, but it doesn't have to be though. Um, it, it, but it's quite shocking um, and it's a quite ch a big change very very big change and it can be unexpected in the fact that you know the universe comes in and just rips something down for you tear something down or you are the one that 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 makes some sort of sort of sudden change sudden move blah 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 so it may not be unexpected to you if that's the case for you but to others around you or to whomever it's affecting it's quite unexpected or it's just a big big change right well in the tower it's depicted as a large big massive tower that's struck by lightning and what i'm seeing here is what i'm feeling is that the lightning struck the tower moment happened and now there's destruction and chaos but quite frankly it was necessary with this justice energy here. It's like, mm, you kind of did this to yourself or you kind of brought this upon yourself. And this doesn't have to be, this doesn't have to be individual, just individual. This could be on a massive scale. Like you could, you could be observing how some things are just starting to like crumble, you know, and there's literally nothing that you can do except watch it come down or just watch it burn because whatever is being it really feels like whatever is being destroyed or whatever is on fire or whatnot whatever is toxic it needed to be destroyed anyway so that a brand new life can come forward that is very indicative of the twin flame journey for those of you who may be new to my channel um, when I started divine conversations I started doing twin flame readings because I went through my whole, my own twin flame activation, catalyst, catalyzation, whatnot, whatever. Um, and we've since parted ways. We haven't seen, seen or speaking to each other, seen or spoken to each other in over a year now. Um, and I'm not really going to speak to like the future projection. I, I, know, I mean, I know what I still hear. Um, I mean, no, I mean, I, I know what I still hear. I know what I still feel, but I'm leaving it up to the universe. I'm completely surrendering to it. Um, oh, shit. Oh, but I, I, I momentarily forgot where I was going with that. But I don't really do twin official twin flame readings anymore, mainly because I've been trying to kind of like separate myself from that whole thing because it's become like this major thing that's just like kind of got grown out of control a little bit. Um, but those messages, <laughs> those messages still come through, even though I try to avoid that situation like the freaking plague, <laughs> those messages still come through in my readings. So and I'm, I'm, a, I'm basically a twin flame guide, even though at this point I would rather not be, but that's just my ego speaking. But anyway, I say all that to say, Whatever, what I'm speaking about here, what I'm feeling here, especially in the Four of Swords and the, um, the Justice card, 
whatever is being destroyed, whatever is burning down, whatever you're watching, just helplessly watching crumble or, or, or burn away or whatnot, whatever, is very indicative of the twin flame journey because one of the main goals of the twin flame journey is to bring forth unconditional love back into humanity, okay? And it's coming through in ways that are, and relationships and circumstances that are extremely unconventional. Like we are, we are, we are completely parting from the norm and completely parting from patriarchal society, dualistic society, codependent society, codependent relationships, and we're creating a whole new paradigm. And that's what I'm seeing here in the Four of Swords and Justice, okay? Now on the other side of this, yes, if we're talking twin flame situation, this is kind of the masculine. It could also be the feminine though. It really could be both. It really absolutely could, could be both. I am picking up more on the masculine energy right now, but that's just because on the masculine side, I'm feeling like they are becoming consciously aware of how things have been completely and utterly imbalanced, like zero reciprocity or minimal, the absolute minimal amount of reciprocity and how it created a situation of loss how you're now dealing with the regret, the remorse, the shame. And the feminine is dealing with this too. But the feminine had been dealing with this for consciously for much longer here, all right? And we do have this energy of the two of swords here, but in this can be indecisiveness and it can be a situation in which you're feeling like you don't know how to move forward, you don't know what to do next, you don't know how to say you're sorry, you don't know how to reconcile, you don't know how this is gonna come together. Even though there is this conscious awareness of a bond, two of cups, which is in the daytime, whereas on this side, it's the nighttime scene, right? But here it came out daytime. This is conscious awareness, okay? But also, now that I've talked about this side, I also kind of feel like this Two of Swords is deliberate inaction, but because you can't. There's no action to take right now. You're just gonna have to let things fall away, burn away as it will. I mean, sure, it can be indecisiveness, but at this point, I don't even really want to call it indecisiveness because there's, there's, <laughs> until things stop burning, there's no action to take. Until the space is completely clear for whatever is new that's meant to be coming through here, has that space to come through? What action to take? What action is there to take? You know, that's, that's kind of what I'm getting with this Two of Swords energy. This might seem really dark and kind of depressing and sad. Okay, but look at the look at the silver lining here. The fool with the emperor. Taking your power back, okay? Being the master of your own domain. I just heard working hard to see things turn out right, correctly. I don't know, whatever that means for you. Um but also with this fool energy, with it being a nighttime scene, I also kind of feel like you're not quite ready to take that leap of faith yet. But you're getting there. Someone's definitely getting there. Okay, so next, let's, uh, let's get a little bit of clarity going on here. I do, let's start with the Six of Pentacles, the Five of Cups. The Two of Cups and the Two of Swords. Let's see what we get there. And then maybe we'll we'll clarify this Four of Swords justice a little bit more. But um, yeah, let's give this one more shuffle. And then I want to get some clarity on this energy right here. Okay. All right. So what is this? Just some clarity here, please, Spirit greater definition of what these energies are for whomever is hand dealing with this right now. I do feel like there is some sort of development, cognitive development on in um, terms of reciprocity. How to be more balanced in life, how to be more balanced in situations, in love, maybe even career, um, family, all this kind of stuff. 
it's more than just romantically. However, I do, especially a twin, if the, especially a twin flame catalyzation, and I can totally speak to that because I dealt with that, um, and that is a lesson that I've actually really started to learn. Like, I am incredibly grateful for the person that really catalyzed this for me um, because he really showed me. He really helped to break me out of the karmic cycle, the karmic loop that I just kept. I just kept running through. I, I kept running on that hamster wheel of this uh, uh, hamster wheel of this co karmic cycle that I in this karmic energy that I was in. And now that I've come out of that and I'm I'm deep into healing from that and I have a different perspective, uh, perspective. Excuse me. Oh, pers perspection, the, the combination of perspective and perception. Nice. <laughs> but now that I see differently and I'm de so deep into the trenches of healing from that, I no longer want any sort of relationship like that. Um, and that, and the biggest manifestation of that was my relationship with my ex-husband. Okay. But then after that, I started to, I, 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 I um, I, I manifested people into my life that just that mirrored or recre or represented that same energy and from this more awakened or aware point of view I was able to pinpoint that and say oh my god that's what that is no I don't want that and shut it down right so it definitely feels like here this is exactly what you or maybe maybe if you're that masculine that I'm channeling for here or if you are the feminine in this situation and you're in like the position the same position that I found myself in that's what you're dealing with right now that's what you're coming to terms with that's what you're starting to understand but in order for you to really have the justice in the form of the two of cups or the relationship that you really desire that you truly desire you're going to have to let some of this stuff burn away first okay and you could totally see that as emotional purging for sure yes okay so let i mean maybe i just completely clarified that without the cards <laughs> okay but that that wanted to come out they're saying one more shuffle all right so i'm not even going to look at that card yet we're going to get one more shuffle and we're going to see what comes out if anything comes out and then oh yep wow okay there you go right there I'm going to stop there. We have overall energy up there. There it is, you guys. The Ten of Wands. This is the gold, not the golden. This is um, the Dreaming Way Tarot. I really, really love this deck. It's absolutely one of my favorites. Um, I love the way the Ten of Wands is depicted here because you can either see this as picking up those Ten Wands and those Ten Wands represents burdens, responsibilities, just stuff that you have to do, right? That you may not necessarily even want to do, but you're kind of required to, you're obligated to even in some situations. You can either see it as this person is picking up these wands or you can see it as someone's putting down these wands. And I totally saw it as someone putting down the wands, okay? You have the Empress with the Knight of Cups and Death. Wow. And then this one last card. Ooh, that six of cups. Soulmates. Wow. This is definitely indicative of what has been going on in the collective lately, especially in terms of twin flames and counterparts. So please excuse me if you don't resonate with a twin flame journey, if you don't resonate with having a divine counterpart, whatever you want to call it, it's just a label, don't worry about it. Um, but you still find yourself on my channel here. You don't have to resonate with that to get some sort of understanding or to resonate with this reading, okay? Because think about it this way. Even if you're not on a twin flame journey, the people that are, that have taken on that responsibility are helping to influence everybody because we all are we all are one we're all connected what what one person does to help themselves to raise their vibration and heal that will reverberate throughout the collective and that will help influence others to do the same raise their vibration and heal so the work that the individuals that are on the twin flame journey are that they're doing is absolutely affecting everyone else that not necessarily that hasn't chosen to take that on in this lifetime in this manifestation okay so this can resonate with you you don't have to be a part of that 
you don't have to have taken that on to resonate with this. But there has been a common message within the collective right now of the masculine wanting to come forward towards the feminine, wanting to make a, an offer. In order to do that, though, he's going to have to release the burdens because the empress, which does represent the feminine energy, is not about to go back into that codependency, into back into that old paradigm. Just not. Okay, absolutely not going to. Okay. Transformation, Six of Cups, yeah. Yeah, this is beautiful. This is really, really beautiful, you guys. Okay. I do want to look at the Four of Swords and Justice now. Just to get a little more clarity on that. On what this is. So, Four of Swords with Justice, please, Spirit. Or what actually, I want to look, because we're, oh, Eight of Pentacles, yep, okay. Interesting, that Eight of Pentacles has been coming out a lot lately. Overall energy of, yeah, there you go, Eight of Cups. The Eight of Pentacles with the Eight of Cups. So the Eight of Pentacles has been coming out a lot lately. <clears throat> the Eight of Pentacles is about craftsmanship, it's about hard work it's about long hours it's about the mundane it's about doing the same thing over and over and over to create a certain product um to perfect your craft even um and for the collective this has been an energy of doing the things that you need to do to work on yourself to leave whatever it is you need to leave behind you eight of cups For some of you, this is not so comfortable. This is not so nice. I'm getting just this justice energy. I'm just getting, it's like, this is hard justice here. This is like, for some people, what you're, and you, masculine or feminine, it doesn't matter. But there are some people that have been putzing around for a while, have been consciously, <clears throat> have been willfully ignorant. I will say, it's what this feels like. And justice is here, is, is saying to you, your time is up. Your time is absolutely up. We are not going to stand for this willful, willful, willful ignorance any longer. And it's not even like, um, it's, um, cause I know, cause I feel the egos flaring right now. It's not even a situation in which, you know, you have some, big wig, narcissistic, authoritative figure that's coming forward and deciding what's right for you or what you need to do for your life. No, this is the universe speaking. This is your higher self speaking. This is part of the journey that you chose to come in on. And I mean, you, you, you this definitely, even though the tower didn't come out, this is definitely the effects, the aftermath of a tower moment. Because there is an agenda. There is a universal agenda for the earth to move, shift back from three-dimensional reality back into her natural state of fifth dimensional. In order to do that, there are some low vibrational things and elements that need to be burned away. So justice is saying, it's like, look, time is up. It's time to go. We're doing this and we're doing it now, whether you like it or not. You can either you can either get on the bus, as Killface used to say. Did any of you ever watch uh, Frisky Dingle? Get on the bus. <laughs> you can either get on the bus and go with the flow, or we're going to drag your ass, kicking and screaming. It's up to you. <laughs> Good Lord. All right. Okay. So now we're going to get to the, um, the closing half of our reading here. And I would like to start that with um, Spirit's take. Any final closing messages from Spirit and maybe even some guidance that they have for us in terms of this... <laughs> wow, I wanted to say, in terms of this relationship. Mm, okay. Or then I wanted to say, in terms of this situationship. Okay. But also, just like in terms of what it, whatever this is for whomever this is resonating with. Spirits take 
and a little bit of advice, and then we'll get our oracle guidance. Give this three shuffles in total. All right, spirit. So what do you have to say in terms of this? Nine of Wands. Excellent, 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 excellent. So you have, damn, there's that Knight of Cups again. Overall energy of the Queen of Wands. Boop -a -dee -boop. Okay, so first thing that I picked up on when the Nine of Wands popped out was like, look, look, it's not as bad as you think, all right? I mean, you got this. You just have to persevere. This is encouragement. I know it might feel heavy. I know the way I described a lot of the energies that I'm picking up on here might have been a little bit doomsday, might have been a little bit triggering for someone, um, but it's really not as that as bad as you think, all right? But there are some things that you're gonna, I mean, what I'm hearing is there are some things that you agreed to work on in this lifetime that some people are just absolutely refusing to even acknowledge. And if that's the case, then, I mean, the universe has gotta follow through somehow, right? But it's gonna get better. The sun. This is absolutely for your own highest good, for sure, okay? But the sun is the most optimistic card in the deck, all right? This is really, really good thing. This is going to serve your highest good, Ace of Swords. And what I'm getting with the Ace of Swords is um, awareness. It might be communication. It, it might be. Because, you know, swords, especially especially the Ace of Swords, can represent communication. But this, to me, is just acknowledgement and awareness. Acknowledgement and awareness. Being truthful. Being honest. Seeing something for what it truly is. Recognizing the true meaning that something has for you. Okay? And then you have the Knight of Cups. What this is, what Spirit is saying here is we are in a place, an energetic space of opening our hearts. That is really a, a big message that the Knight of Cups represents. It represents being open-hearted. It present, represents moving forward with intuition, moving forward with what your heart desires, you know, expressing yourself romantically, emotionally, um, expressing some sort of love, making some sort of offer. The Knight of Cups has been coming out constantly, <laughs> okay? I really feel like for those masculines out there that are wanting to connect with their feminine counterpart um, and has really been cut off, really, really, like there, there has been, there's like, there is a seemingly unclosable gap or rift between you and your counterpart. So what Spirit is really saying here is, that he, truth and knowledge and wisdom and authenticity will set you free, okay? You have the ability to do this. You just have to be truthful. You just have to be honest. And that's going to be really difficult because there are a lot of masculine energies, whether you're a man or a woman, it really does not matter. We're not talking about gender. We're talking about energy. But there are a lot of masculine energies out there that are under the influences of some really manipulative and narcissistic individuals or circumstances that are really really dishonest and thrive on conformity and and lack of authenticity but you have to clear that away first in order to really align with this there is no place for in for inauthenticity there is no place for that in this new paradigm that we're shifting into. You were not created 
as, a, as an individual with certain traits, certain elements, certain abilities, certain desires, whatnot, whatever, just to have that ripped away from you to conform, to fit into some sort of cookie cutter mold. This is not a one size fits all situation. It was never meant to be a one size fits all situation. Okay? You are unique just as you are. And you need to embody that. Queen of Wands. The Queen of Wands is confident as fuck. Doesn't give a damn what anyone else has to say about who she is, what she stands for, or any of that. She is completely 100% herself all the time. No if, ands, or buts about it. And she loves herself for who she is. Again, this is not gender, this is energy. This is the confidence to be who you are whenever, 24-7, 365, if you wanna look at it from a time and space point of view. This is also indicative of, this is the archetype of Aries, Aries energy. You also have Aries in the emperor. The emperor also does not give a damn what anyone else has to say about who he is or what he has to do or what he does in his life. Now, Ari, uh, the, 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 the emperor, oh, you do have the emperor and the empress. Look at that, that's cool. Boop, that's awesome. Um, but the emperor is a masculine energy, so it's fixed energy. Okay, that's fine, that doesn't matter. Um, especially when you balance it with the cardinal energy of the feminine. We can talk about all that later. We're already 40 minutes in, and that's gonna be a whole other talk, uh, uh, talk, yes, but some of you already get it because you've been following along for some time, but we'll get to that at another time. Okay. Oracle guidance, and I'm being, I'm being pulled towards the dragons today. So let's, let's do that. <clears throat> All right. Let's get our closing message, our Oracle guidance here from the dragons. Look at this, three shuffles. All right, spirit. And our besties, the dragons. Oracle guidance in terms of this reading, please, spirit. Oh, well, also, guys, death. We are in Scorpio season right now, okay? So Scorpio is about transformation. Death is about transformation. I just recognized that. That's really cool. Sorry, guys. I got sidetracked. Okay. Oracle guidance, please, spirit. Oracle guidance, please. Dragons. Please provide us with the best message for today's reading. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, buckle, em, buckle up, guys. Get comfy, because we have three cards, at least, from what I can see. Yeah, we have three cards, and I was asked to take all of them. So, we have Source Dragon. Attuned, oh my god, Source Dragon. <gasps> I love this card. Source Dragon, attunes you to the infinite. Be still in the silence. I'm sorry, be still. In the silence, magic can happen. Be in the moment. Wow, we have the Golden Atlantean Dragon. Ooh, helps you remember the wisdom of Golden Atlantis. Awaken, bring back your knowledge, gifts, and talents. Reclaim your mastery. And that's absolutely what is happening here with this Four of Swords energy. There are things that need to be destroyed, completely demolished, demolished, okay? And removed from your environment in order for you to do this in order for you to reclaim your mastery, to bring back your knowledge, gifts, and talents because there are entities out there that have worked to basically wipe your, wipe your memory of all that you are, regardless, besides the fact that we, uh, we have crossed this veil of forgetfulness. And, and please understand that, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm jumping all over the place. We, we cross this veil of, of, of uh, forgetfulness when we come, when we manifest uh, and incarnate in these lives. But that's part of the, that's part of the process. It's, it's part of the, 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 the deal, okay? Um, 
but then there are also entities out there that have worked towards wiping your memory of all that you are even going so far as to changing our dna okay like it's that serious um in order to control us but now we have to regain that knowledge do away with all of that programming delete that programming and reprogram ourselves with the truth now don't 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 worry this is all in service of love this is all in service of the light this is all helping us grow and expand but it is a reality okay and then you have the blue dragon from the pleiades prepares you to accept source healing accept a heart activation give and receive heart healing i'm not going to lie to you guys i want to read all three of these i really do so you're getting an extended message today in your oracle guidance this is beautiful i'm going to take all three of them we are going to start <clears throat> let's see first of all um source dragon is the very last card is of the of this whole deck it's the ninth dimensional dragon it's a ninth dimensional dragon but then we have the golden atlantean dragon which is a seventh dimensional dragon and then we have the blue dragon from the pleiades which is also a seventh dimensional dragon these are very very high dimensional messages and assistance here I, ooh, wow we're going to start with the blue dragon from the pleiades okay here we go. Ooh, come on, you. <laughs> okay. The Pleiades is the star cluster of healing. Between Source and the Pleiades, there is a blue etheric rose. It has, I'm sorry, it has 33 petals. For 33 is the vibration of the Christ light. This rose is a transformer through which pure source healing is downloaded to the masters of the Pleiades. They pass it at an appropriate frequency to the angels and the dragons, who in turn shower unto those humans, who in turn shower it unto those humans who are ready. The incredible seventh dimensional blue dragons from the Pleiades hold the rose in their hearts and radiate source healing. They whirl around us, pouring this blue heart healing into us as soon as we see we are as soon as they see we are ready. They activate and light up a free a high frequency blue rose in each of our twelve chakras, preparing our energy fields for the angels of the Pleiades to connect with us. Even then they will remain with us so that we can easily hold the healing vibration of the blue rolls and pass it on to others. The guidance here says a blue dragon from the Pleiades has come to you today to offer you healing by lighting up a blue rose in each of your chakras. Relax, invite it to touch you and accept any energy it brings you. Alternatively, it may have sought you to suggest you have a beautiful blue Plea Plea Pleiadian healing under, I'm sorry. Alternatively, it may have sought you to suggest you give beautiful blue Pleiadian healing under the law of grace to others. If you wish to do this, tell it that you are ready and it will activate a huge energetic blue rose in your heart so you can direct source healing to a person or situation. Beautiful. Next, we have the golden Atlantean dragon. Where are you? There you are. Okay. Sorry, guys. Give me a second. Okay. <laughs> I had eye goopers. Okay. The seventh dimensional golden Atlantean dragons hold the keys and codes of the awesome wisdom of golden Atlantis. The golden era of Atlantis lasted for 1,500 years, and during this time, the people lived in harmony and happiness at the upper level of the fifth dimension. Humans, animals and the land itself radiated a golden aura and everyone enjoyed soul satisfaction source energy powered the great crystal held in the temple of poseidon which was the power source for the civilization 
the awesome spiritual technology of Atlantis was activated by crystals and mind control. When we are ready to bring back our in innate Atlantean knowledge and wisdom, golden Atlantean dragons will come to us and reactivate the gifts and talents in and information held within our DNA. The guidance here says, this card invites you to activate your own personal fifth dimensional blueprint for it contains the light of the incredible era of golden Atlantis. The golden Atlantean dragon who has come to you now worked directly with all the great masters of Atlantis during the Halcyon days and remembers exactly who you truly are. Prepare to reclaim your mastery. You are ready to dissolve the final veils of amnesia and your dragon will assist you to do so. Ask it to breathe its golden fire into your third eye so that the final clearance and awakening can take place. Your dragon will then remain with you and shine light into you as you prepare to stand in your power as an Atlantean master. And that veil of amnesia that this spoke about is what is exactly what I was talking about when we crossed it over into when we when we uh, incarnated here. We we passed through a veil of amnesia that causes us to forget who we are with intentions of having us rediscover that. Okay, <clears throat> and so finally, we have Source Dragon. I love this card. In the center of all the dimensions, galaxies, and universes is an infinite point of pure stillness and love. This is the heart of Source, and, it f and from it flows the most incredible illumination. As the wishes of Source flow forth, the illumined, the illumined angels known as the seraphim sing OM, O-H-M, OM, the vibration of master creation at a 12th dimensional frequency. This allows the will of the creator to spread as, seeds, as seed thoughts into the universe. Ninth dimensional transparent white source dragons exist purely to attend to the divine will and turn wishes into reality. They step down the light to a ninth dimensional level so that we can access it. They act as portals of light through which we can connect with the energies of the infinite. The guidance here says, a source dragon has come to you now because it is time for you to enjoy a period of stillness with awareness and that I'm gonna give me a second I just want to stop right there because that is so true many of us have been in this extended hermit period have almost kind of felt like we were stuck or stagnant Betsy of fearless intuition has been describing it as being on pause and I absolutely agree with that we're not stuck we're not stagnant we're not being held back we're literally just on pause for a moment okay I'm gonna say this again a source dragon has come to you now because it is time for you to enjoy a period of stillness with awareness. Breathe deeply and listen to the silence. Something very sacred is coming into your life. This could be anything from the fruition of a long held dream to becoming a true master. It is being presented to you now. Be diligent, calm and focused and remember to breathe deeply. Breath is the key to being in the moment and this is where the greatest magic happens. Ask the source dragon to accompany you on every step of your exciting new journey and always remember that the present moment creates your future. Wow, this is beautiful you guys, very beautiful energies. I understand for some of you this is not so pretty right now. In, but truth be told, a true awakening is never pretty. <laughs> but Source 100% has your back here. The universe 100% has your back here. All right, guys? So I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. I hope you all have a beautifully fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye.